Pete, period. Your period, not period. <laughs> Jack, period. Black, period. Five stars. <laughs> Brunch. Hit it, boys. Well, that stinks. Now the Super League isn't happening. I was very excited about the Super League for about three hours. I The only thing I knew about the Super League was that I was going to be a Super League guy. Super League super fan. I didn't hear anything positive about the Super League. And there's a lot of like, hey, can you explain to me what the Super League is? Why don't you explain it to me like I'm five. Our friend Megan Kelly threw that Michael Scott gif out there. I've liked asking people about it because everybody says the same thing, which is... Uh, just imagine uh, if the original six decided that they don't want to be in the that they don't they don't want to follow the NHL's rules, or a bunch of billionaires just want to do like a lot of Bill Simmons pay for your own stadium fucking stadium type of energy, <laughs> and everybody seemed so on the same page against this thing with a very cool name that I was like, I think this is it. This is what finally gets me into European soccer. <laughs> very cool, very cool name, and like all the big teams that everybody cares about all playing against each other. Like it sounded pretty cool to me. Were you going to be in? Like, what, was I not going to be in? Oh, uh, okay. Oh, so it's a Twitter. It was a Twitter update. What? Super League was a Twitter oh, update. Oh, right. Like, what, what like, am I just... We're not doing it. Oh, I don't get why Everybody would have done it. Yeah, and then they do it. Although, yeah. shout out Fleets. I think, was it, uh, did Will tweet that the other day? Like, who, like, what do you think the guy who suggested Fleets <laughs> is up to right now? Like, is he, like, laying low at Twitter? That was the one update to a uh, very commonly used platform. That everyone was like, we're not going to do this. And then a week later, they were like, we're still not doing this. Yeah. And months later, nobody does it. I've never even been tempted to do a fleet. I know we made the blood, we blood did, oath. We did the yeah. blood oath. The first, all that blood. first blood oath in podcast history. Um, and I have I was like, maybe didn't lose any sleep at night. But there were a few nights where I was like, what if it's like, what if what if fleets are cool? Yeah. What if, what if fleets become big and we just signed a blood oath on the podcast <laughs> we're fucked and then like a week later everybody was like nah fleets are trash and i was like oh thank god all right that would have been blood well spent that would be right blood well spent that would have been so fitting if there was like a thing on twitter with great opportunity and you couldn't do it <laughs> because of me right that would be the you're like oh i i would do it but i did this blood oath that said we'd never flee like Why'd you do that? Who's, whose idea was it to do that? Well, me and DJ came up with it. Like, wh- why did you and DJ the come idea up with a Twitter of, idea? The idea of you, like, driving Influencing, any sort of social yeah. strategy for me is yeah. so Blocking bad. you out of fleets. I'm going to keep an eye on that. If there's any, pretty much anything that comes up from now on, uh, Twitter-wise, that's, like, big, I'm going to be like, hey, <laughs> look, Pete, I know a lot of people are making these Harambe jokes. No one's going to laugh at them. No one's going to think they're funny. Trust me. You're going to want to sit out this entire summer of Harambe jokes. Uh, speaking of them. social strategy, the people responded quite well to our idea to uh, shorting to memes. shorting memes. Yeah. We even got a, uh, an inquiry from our guy Brett at Wash, and he mm-hmm. was like, all right, what's the platform here? So uh, we haven't done Brett's it yet. Brett's got to we know have, we weren't going right. to come up with anything. There's no real strategy. Yeah. We haven't done it yet, but... Um, it's a good idea. It's confirmed a good idea that people are in on it. I'm excited for the first uh, execution. I started getting the ball rolling on the timeline tweets. Uh, mostly we are seeing them with the with the joint. And then like the first couple puffs of the joint are this. And then the rest of the puffs are this. I thought about doing that with uh, Father John Misty. It would have been a little too inside baseball. It was like the first puff of the joint says... Uh, pour me another drink and punch me in the face. And then the rest of the joint is thinking about how that was the first <laughs> puff of <laughs> Father John Misty. That is, uh, yeah, that's fair. Uh, and then, like, the, I, the first like, one the that very I... bottom is like, there's nothing to fear. <laughs> We're like, you're like, oh, I'm, it's okay. This is, this is all good and normal. The first one of those memes that I saw was Budweiser. Budweiser really? tweeted, uh, yeah, it was like, ooh, this first sip of the Bud hits, hits good. And then it's like, big section, so happy that I'm drinking a Bud. And then it's like, the last one, it's time to get another Bud. And that, uh, that I saw, I believe, because I went to Bud's timeline after 
they have committed to you. That was so oh, you want to talk about social strategy, man. Look at us. We're just doing alley oops all over the place. You texted me and you were like, Hey, you know the Budweiser tweet we talked about that like made Budweiser nice to me? You should just like reply to that and take credit for whatever because we were talking back on the podcast. No, I said that you should send the exact same tweet. Oh, that's what it was. You, I, said you, I, was I like, said you I should, should do the exact it. same tweet. And you were like, nope, you're going to be pissed at my idea. Yeah. And you just took that was credit for it. Though. Yeah, it was yeah. pretty good. Yeah. And they immediately, super nice. They DM me, asked for the information. I gave them the information, all that. I think I'm just going to keep, I'm going to do what I was doing with Tay Diggs for a while. Which is just like every now and then just still shoot him a DM <laughs> about whatever. Just make sure that he doesn't forget about you. Do people still do that with Tay Diggs? What, like, like DM that, him? Yeah. I don't know. I haven't heard about Tay Diggs on Twitter in a long time. Was that even a thing or was that just something that I thought was funny? I don't think it was a thing. I think that you just did it. But uh, Tay Diggs was like a, hey, this guy follows everybody right. account. Yeah. Um, and so like it, it opened it up to everybody. But I think that you were like, I'm going to. Since he follows everybody, I'm going to DM him. <laughs> I, the only one I remember is uh, the Joey Batista did the bat flip. Oh, yeah. And everyone was mad about it. And I was like, thoughts. <laughs> Tay, what do we think? Tay Diggs is awesome. He is awesome and very handsome. We discussed that on the uh, the bald episode. That's right. We broke the news that Tay Diggs <laughs> is bald. fact handsome. Uh, we are going to a soccer game. We are. Very excited about that. We are going uh, baby's first Revs game. No, I've been to a Revs game. Have you been to a Revs game? Yeah. Well, I'll just go fuck Sorry. myself. <laughs> I was so excited that this was baby's first Revs game. I told, apparently before I even told you, like, hey, uh, I got this spare ticket. Let's go to the Revs game. I t- explained to Jeff in long detail, hey, I've got an extra ticket to the opener, but I'm not going to bring you because... Pete hasn't been to a game yet. Whoops. Really want to bring him. Like he's he definitely wants to be on, in on the Revs experience. And because of the pandemic and everything, that bridge hasn't <laughs> fully been crossed yet. So I think this is a great time to to get him in the mix. And then once the pandemic's over, buddy, it'll be the all three of us. us. Yeah. We'll be going to Revs games all the time. And then the other day when I got the tickets, I was like, just a reminder, Revs game this Saturday. You're like, oh, can I come? Yeah, you were like, you were like, hey, uh, I've got a, I might have an extra ticket to the Revs game on Saturday, like hot ticket. <laughs> you were like, I haven't decided yet, but uh, if you, uh, if you're, if you're around and interested, maybe I'll bring you. But it wasn't like a hard, like, hey, you're coming to the Revs game. So you were like, hey, just a reminder, Revs games on on Saturday. And I was like, oh, I'm, so so I'm coming. And you were like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> I already told Jeff no. I'm realizing I've actually done that. A few times with various tickets to various things where I float out the like, hey, maybe I'll bring you <laughs> to this thing. Yeah. I mean, usually people have like a, 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 like a pecking order. Yes, like, no? Right. And then if somebody says no, you move down to the next person. You tell everybody at once and give them all like a maybe. And then you draw a name out of the hat a couple days before the game. Yeah. That's no good. That, that's not a good quality. That's... <laughs> no. um. Aziz Ansari did that episode of Master of None, where he's got a ticket, and he has a a ticket, and he doesn't know who to give it to, to a concert. Do you remember who the concert is? It was a Secret Father John Misty it was show. A secret Father John Misty show. I don't know if Father John Misty would do a secret show that people know about. Because like when he when he asks the the um the woman who works at the restaurant, she's not. I can't remember if she's a server or what her role is at the establishment, but she has a Cartman impression that uh, he he finds annoying. When he asks her, he's like, hey, I got an extra ticket to that Secret Father John Misty show Saturday. And she's like, oh, yeah, I know about that. That's not a Secret Father John Misty show. No, definitely not. Unless, I don't know, maybe. I feel like when they do like secret shows, it's just like you announce it. Like there, there's no like real like plan leading up to it. It's just like, hey, I just put tickets on sale to the show. Yeah, and that's what like the, where like the secret is. I'm trying to think. Have I been to? I don't think I've been to a secret show. I've been. Um, this is not aged well, but I've been to a, a secret uh, Louis C.K. stand up show. Oh, th- that was that was one of the like the he emailed people long to be at Summerville. Yeah, 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 yeah. That I think would qualify. Yeah, that's so. That's like it's like a hey, I'm. Um, out of nowhere, I'm doing this. Yeah. And it's like a secret to the people that are on my mailing list or whatever. Yeah. So that's like, I feel like Father John Misty would do that. 
that'd be really cool. My friends and I have already just I've gotten so many people into Father John Misty during the pandemic. It's the it's peak pa- only, peak Father John right, Misty I mean, time. It's a, not a difficult. It, it's it's so weird. It's so hard to get people into Father John Misty when the world isn't in a pandemic, and when it's in a pandemic, so easy. Yeah, like I feel like fights was overdue to become a Father John Misty guy forever for sure and then one day he was just like hey i'm gonna check out father john misty what should i listen to and i was like this this this, and this and the next day he was like father john misty's awesome i like him a lot now like this has never happened with <laughs> right. any, and i've tried to get a lot of people into father john misty but a bunch of my friends have gotten into him so much so that we're like yo when the pandemic's over doesn't matter if he's not coming to boston we will go to him we will go wherever yeah, we had a weird experience this past week uh, where we I don't know how it happened, but like I ended up in a Father John Misty rabbit hole on YouTube. And, oh, yeah. And uh, and we came across a video that neither one of us had seen. And like, that's shocking because we know all the Father John Misty <laughs> YouTube videos that exist. But uh, he did. It was like for MTV or something where like he did like this segment um, in I don't know, Brazil or something. And he just like went around the city doing like a, a goofy sort of like travel show. <laughs> yeah. And there was so many clippable moments from it and it was fucking hilarious. So uh, you'll probably end up seeing some of those on, on Twitter at some point soon. Yeah, we're going to start working drops into the apps, by the way. We're overdue to do that. So maybe we'll have some Father John Misty drops in there. Uh, really, we'll, we want some James Blunt drops some side drops james blunt is a weird element of brunch because like it is it's not really a uh like a re- he's not really not like a seminal, recurring not like a big thing he's no, not a recurring guest he just he has like one cameo and yeah. it has just become like hey remember when this happened and it's still funny yeah i even saw people he's like the soup nazi yeah what, what, right <laughs> he's in that one episode I'll see people now, though, where they'll post, like, pictures of themselves with, like, a sweaty face after, the, like, doing yard work, whatever it may be, and all I want to do is reply, like, James Blunt, shovel and snow ass <laughs> face. Um, when we go to the soccer game, we've there's a legacy we've got to carry on. So, I don't know what you're wearing. I, I, I got... I, the I got one of the new like Revs throwbacks. I'll probably be rocking that. But I got a bunch of Revs jerseys. If you want to wear one, or who knows, maybe it's at Gillette. You could pop into the pro shop, grab like a Johnu Smith or Hunter <laughs> Henry <laughs> jersey, something like that. No, they got all sorts of stuff. Actually, it'd be pretty sick if you got a Matt Turner jersey because that one I don't have. But um, for go or wearing, there's a dude. There was a dude the other day at the Red Sox game. Oh, he is. He is the respectable dude with sign. Yeah. He was holding up a sign that said Verdugo. Generous on the word sign. It was such a small sign. And we are a hundred million percent doing that at the Revs game. We are bringing little signs. Like I'm going to have a sign that says like Revs going to win. You hold the little one that says like, I love the Revs. (laughs) Imagine if we'd have to talk to people. Um, I don't know who we know at uh, Channel 4, but like, yo, get us on TV. I want a shot of us holding up tiny ass little signs. I'm down with that. Wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah. And the best part about that guy, other than his tiny sign, that was the best part, the tiny sign. He was uh, wearing a Grateful Dead shirt. <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't even a real Grateful Dead shirt. Was it, it was... like Dead & Co? No, anything? it was it was a Grateful Dead shirt, but like the logo, was, it said Tip Jar. It didn't even say. I think Tip Jar is like a, an app. Oh, really? So it yeah. was. I it was Grateful Dead like inspired, inspired bootleg, bootleg merch. Yeah. Well, that's as common a thing as exists in the world. Yeah. I, like yeah. everything has been Grateful Deadified at some but, point. But uh, a big sneaky part of that was him. Uh, him writing the the ninety nine on his like yeah. doctor's mask. <laughs> this guy's like the like the biggest Alex Verdugo super fan in the world, and somehow he catches an Alex Verdugo home run ball and has like the sign ready to go. So may I ask what ninety nine is? It's uh, Verdugo's number. Does Alex Verdugo wear number ninety nine? Yeah. Is that true? Yes. I have watched most Red Sox games this year. <laughs> he wears number ninety nine. Let me check this. 
Verdugo. I'm number. not lying to you. Nine nine. Whoa! I really didn't know that. You know, my favorite recent sports take of mine has been everyone was so horny for that Alex Verdugo at bat last week. Yeah. Where he well, like two days ago it was on Patriots Day. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was. No, no, not that. No, not that one. Last week he was. Uh, he hit. Oh, the, a the two days ago. Two, two days ago was Dalbeck. Yeah, had yeah, an yeah. unbelievable at bat. La- late last week, it might have been last Wednesday. Yeah, no, yeah, I know. Started exactly. off 0-2. Yeah. Yeah. It was a super long at bat. Yeah. He ended up, I think, like three run double, something like that. I think I'm out on what an at bat, unless it's a home run on the first pitch. He started <laughs> off 0 and 2. Yeah, but like you to fight back from 0 and 2, and like stay alive on a bunch of different pitches. That that is very exciting. So what? Like if I end up happy. Are you going to say, like, what a life from DJ? Because, like, it started off eh, and then got to a place where, <laughs> yeah, that where you were what you want Rooting to happen actually you. happens. Yeah, I guess. But, like, what if somebody started off awesome and then just killed it their entire life? I would rather see somebody get very excited about, like, a, a really great at bat than see somebody get, like, super excited about a no hitter. Because no, I'm just out on no hitters. Like, there's like five of them every five to seven yeah. every single year. It's not that special. Like, bad pitchers throw no hitters. I just realized what an at bat is a redemption arc. Oh, that, that's we, not necessarily true. Like, you can. By you, the way, we are both 100% into redemption arcs, right? Like, we, we believe in, like, hopefully. Things get better for whatever yeah. situation, yeah. whatever people, whatever it may be. The redemption arcs ended up getting a bad rap because they're like, "Hey, don't don't make it look like this, the like the the bad guy got good or whatever." Like, no, like sh- shit's hard. Yeah, <laughs> like, um, like you you want the situation at the end to be better than it was the beginning. Yeah, uh, but we, we yeah. say that we're out on redemption arcs because they they get a very bad rap, right? Um, no, like it. it a good at bat isn't necessarily a redemption arc. Like you can be in like a three one count and still put up a great at bat. Like the guy's throwing strikes, you're just following off pitches and things like that, yeah. staying alive. It's not, you don't necessarily have to be in a hole. I to love have a that. Great at bat. That's one of my favorite things in baseball. What? Just taking, just following off pitchers' good stuff. Like <laughs> ooh, you can get me out with this. I'm just gonna put that ball over there. Put it over there. Put it over there. Put it over there. I do love uh like pissing baseball players off so like it is quite funny when a, a, a batter just like wastes a pitcher's good pitches yeah like it is very funny that like a pitcher's like all right here comes my best stuff and then the guy just follows off like seven of them in a row and the pitcher's like i'm gonna kill you i'm gonna kill you this yeah. is so annoying uh so i'm very by the way i'm very in on baseball again i sneaky am too i don't know the number of alex verdugo but I've been watching way more baseball. You know what I think must be such an awesome feeling in baseball? Like, this might be the best feeling in baseball other than first pitch. Again, my idea of a good at bat, first pitch, grand slam, <laughs> slow bat toss, to like, take a step 45 degrees towards the pitcher, mouth, fuck you, blow a kiss. And then walk around the bases to get a bat. That's my favorite. That's to my get favorite a bat. At bat, and that's that's probably one of my favorite baseball things. But I think up there has to be, and this is very underrated because it, we just take it for granted. And I'm I think I'm using underrated correctly here. Mm-hmm. You know what must rule in baseball? What thinking two, thinking two, like that. Oh, it's oh, <laughs> it's in the gap. <laughs> What kind of arms this guy got We're about to find out <laughs> yeah that's it's, it's belief in yourself it's wanting to do a little more work because let's Actually, face it when you're running like how often do you want to run a little more building off that one of the best baseball things is thinking to getting halfway to second and then realizing it was a terrible idea that that's see, just getting your steps in <laughs> just seeing the fear in a runner's eyes just be like oh bit off a lot more than i could chew here yeah the best is when the best is when a guy rounds first, gets halfway to second, and then realizes that he's out, and so he just like pulls up and just gets tagged out without even sliding. I love this happened yesterday in the Red Sox game, uh, when between third and home. I love. I think that this is like a 
old baseball gentlemanly stupid ass thing that I think should remain in the game. I love the act of giving yourself up. Yeah, just <laughs> you win. Just being like, I concede. I'm not you two third baseman catcher and pitcher hanging up behind me. You three were very prepared for this. And now that I, I think about I would, it, I surrender. Now that I think about it, what sport uh, includes the most conceding? Ooh. It's got to be baseball, right? Like, baseball, by not changing, is conceding that it's just not going to be popular. <laughs> that's fair. So that it has to be that. But like in baseball, you concede like, uh, like intentional walk. Like yeah. you concede on the base path yep. sometimes. Like even an infield fly could be considered like conceding. pitchers leave the mound when the the manager comes to get them. <laughs> that's true. Who knows what happens in other sports there? Um, yeah, there's not a lot of conceding otherwise. It would be great if pitchers. I'm going to stick on that for a second. If pitchers just every no. now and then, imminent domain said no, right? Squatters' rights. <laughs> right. Squatters. I've been here for the last six inning. I own this place now. You have no re- Jin Yang. You have no recourse. I stay here nine innings. <laughs> a lot of pitchers want to do that anymore. I think. No. The, I think the pitchers might be more into the. Uh, anti Jack McKeonism. I this yeah, is such a work. baseball podcast right now. Yeah. The anti Jack McKeonism of 2021 baseball, where you don't want the pitcher to go through the rotation so many times. Where Jack McKeon was like, if he dies, he right. dies. And yeah, that's right. He's gonna die before me. <laughs> Nine hundred year old yeah. Jack McKeon. Jack McKeon was cool. Is Jack McKeon still going? I don't know, man. Let's find out. He's... Today I'm gonna learn Alex a Rodrigo's lot of baseball number, things and. If Jack McKeon's still going. Uh, they're both 99. <laughs> Jack McKeon is 90 years old. He is, uh, his middle name is Aloysius. Okay. His nickname is Trader Jack. He's a former Major League Baseball manager and front office executive. Can you really say former, though, when we're living in the world of Tony La Russa <laughs> managing a good team? A good young team. A good young team that is like progressive in the baseball sense. Do you know how out of everything Tony La Russa was? Tony La Russa was, and I mean, little dis, I mean, I mean, absolutely no disrespect here, but like in hockey, a lot of times people you've heard of will work for teams in kind of ambiguous roles. Yeah, like legacy jobs. Right, right. I, I, I believe, and I, I haven't been following baseball really at all for the last decade. I believe Jack McKeon, or not Jack McKeon, Tony La Russa was just like doing that with the Red Sox. He sure was. He was just like hanging out. Like yeah. what Chiarelli does with, uh, is he still he was doing like, that with the Blues? I, I'm not sure, but I know that I know that La Russa was like, uh, like a special advisor or something in the front office. Right. It's just like, here's a smart, like it's a smart, successful baseball guy. Let's have him around. And then mm-hmm. someone was like... You're back in the game. <laughs> right. And he's like, I can't just go manage some crumb bum team. They're like, no, it's going to be the White Sox. You can like. And like, ahead, and they fired the uh, the manager of the year to uh, to hire him. Wild. So funny. I may. What else do you want to talk about baseball wise? Uh, I don't know. I'm just like, I'm really into baseball this year. I've been watching like non Red Sox games. Oh, I, I got the MLB yet. TV package. Ooh. Like baseball's always on. So it's very nice. Shout out. uh Carabas, he did a, uh, his baseball tweets are always funny, but uh, the Yankees center fielder throwing the ball in, did you see it? No. It was, I don't know if I'll be able to put this in the video or whatever, but like you knew what it was going to be, but he tweeted like absolute uh, cannon or uh, something. Yeah, let's see. Sure. Um, I did see the, it uh, was it Javi Baez, the, the, uh, the Cubs shortstop, who had like the worst throw of all time, just sent it like 19 rows deep into the first base stands, trying oh, to throw no. to first base. It was incredible. It was like the worst throw of all time. Okay, so here we go. Absolute fucking hose by Aaron Hicks here. My goodness. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Look up the uh, the bias throw. It's it's way worse than that. Really? Yeah, it's a hundred percent worse than that. Baseball. Uh, I'm not gonna say baseball rules because it definitely doesn't. Like I'm no, I, but I, I, it lost me for the, good reason. I used to be the biggest baseball fan in the world, and I, I probably in a tie with everybody else who grew up in in Boston. But 
baseball was every second of everybody. You, you could be a music kid. You could be an athlete. You could be into whatever. You'd be a mathlete. Baseball was always on for everybody. I'm so, starting to realize that, like, the older that I get, and maybe this is just, like, an old person trait, um, the older that I get, like, I like things that I don't have to care about a lot. Yeah. Like, that is, uh, and baseball, I think, is the ultimate, um, like, hey, this is on. I'm going to I'm gonna watch it. I'm going to enjoy it. But at the end of the day, don't really care. Yeah, that's, that's what it is for me. Uh, just kind of background noise. And I would still watch it over the last... <clears throat> How many years I'd still put it on occasionally and have it on in the background, but now I, I I watch it that way the way you're talking like where I can watch several games and not know what the players' numbers are. <laughs> yeah. Whereas back in the day, you knew everything about everybody, and this was right. even pre Wikipedia. You were just like obsessed, whether it be cards, books, publications, whatever it may be. So baseball's back. We're going to prove it at the Revs game by holding up tiny little <laughs> Revs signs, possibly wearing Grateful Dead <laughs> merch. They would be, uh, I don't know if I could do it in time, but Grateful Dead. I don't know. I've got to think about what I'm going to wear stuff. because I don't have any Revs stuff. Would you cop something there? Again, I have multiple jerseys I could toss your way. I may I may do like a, um, hey, Revs for uh, the Super League sort of campaign shirt oh nice <laughs> just being like just red super says, league champions we're already we're already watching the super league and it's the mls logo <laughs> that's a great idea you should be like the biggest pro mls guy if someone's like who's your favorite team like the league right yeah i'm, I'm uh, rob Lowe. yes exactly i'm just i go to games wearing the mls hat i think there is I've learned a lot about MLS over the last couple of years. I think one of the things is that they don't like when you call it the MLS, I believe. Oh, well, it's, well, it's like saying Major League. Like ba- the like MLB. The, yeah. Right. I, I, so MLS, okay. I'll tell you what, though. This is just some free MLS pub. As somebody who hasn't been able to get into EPL and non-Ted Lasso European soccer, and even so, I don't really care about the games then. MLS is so easy to get it. Even as like they're adding teams, they are putting teams in super cool places too. Like Austin. Austin, man. Yeah. 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 I was I was t- torn a little bit between being like a Austin FC guy or like a Revolution guy because I'm, like I have no I have no loyalty to the Revolution. Right. I have uh, I, I'm going to keep an eye on Austin FC is like maybe like your B the team. other team. Yeah. yeah they they don't play the Revs in Austin this year. I don't think they do because I was looking, I was like, that would be a cool trip to make. But also I think I would just want to go to an Austin FC game against somebody else. Right. Who cares? I want to root for yeah. Austin when I go there. Right. I can't, I couldn't tell you what their kits look like, but um, a lot of uh, lime green, I think. Interesting. It's like black and green. I think uh, I learned this from the dude with the sign thing. I did not know, and this thrills me, there is at least one brunch listener who is a deadhead. And I I think it's one of the washed converts, but there's someone who's been interacting with our stuff a lot, supporting the the podcast, and so when I I retweeted your tweet of the uh, the do with the sign thing, and he was like, and the best part is, it's all dead stuff. And then he posts like a picture of himself wearing a bunch of Grateful Dead gear. Totally in on that. If you are a deadhead who listens to brunch, please hit us up. Give recommendations. I I like deadheads more than I actually like the Grateful Dead, or more than I actually know about the Grateful Dead. So all in. Also Thursday, I will finally drop. The as referenced on brunch playlist. It's up to about fifty five songs right now. Somebody found it. No, they didn't. Did they? Yeah, like it was dropped in the Discord. Really? Yeah. Let me check. Yeah, somebody, uh, somebody put it out there. I thought, I thought you would, uh, you would put it out there. Like it's on my phone because I saw somebody. Did I not make it secret? No, you definitely didn't because I have it on my phone. Uh, it is right there. I feel so fucking docs. <laughs> See, this is uh this is the problem with being like the washed people 
are people are, are thanking in. the person who found it. Yeah, put it out there. right. So I thought that uh, I thought like you had kind of just like floated it out there. Somebody like literally found it and put it in the Discord. Shout wow. out to the Wash people. Like they are active fans on it. Yo, I mean, shout out everybody. Shout out whoever's checking out the pod, getting into it. Um, I did see somebody say that uh, they already forgot that we were part of Wash. So uh, good for uh, good. We got a nice little balance going on. Some people are doxing you. Mm -hmm. uh, Some people are just forget that you exist. Nice. That I exist. I don't know. Should I make it secret now or should I? Nah, man. It's it's already out there. And I've been listening to it too. Um, I forgot. I'm just afraid to, to put it out there when... I don't feel it's it's not going to be complete, and I think that that having it out there, it's an ongoing project, it'll be like in beta testing where people will be like, "Hey, don't forget, you guys talked about this," um, because like there there's certain artists that I know we've talked about that I just haven't put it up, put on there yet. Donna Lewis, I love you always forever. I, that was on that was there. one of the first ones. Okay, yeah, that yeah, was yeah. on there, and I was like, "Oh man, I totally forgot how much I love this song," and so yeah. now that's back in rotation. I was considering putting the jukebox the ghost version on there because i think that's what got us talking about it but great song if there's if you you have any suggestions of what should be on there definitely let me know i now i was i was gonna say could make it collaborative but that would be such an absolute mess that's not on brand for brunch that's true yeah that's it's it's us against you don't forget that speaking of which support the podcast patreon (laughs) dot com slash listen to brunch we're almost at 200 patrons it's it's a it's a i don't want to say crawl because that sounds pessimistic but we're a few we're away. grinding man yeah we're grinding we're getting there and once we're at 200 then 225 is around the corner so i think we're at we're in the high 190s right now so get us to 200 then we get to 225 then we get to affleck week. i'm i'm h word for affleck week right we're we're look the sooner you get us to affleck week the sooner we start thinking about what is Affleck Week actually going to be? We've also gotten some nice emails. We last have. Go- we just re- we used to get emails all the time, and then two things that have kind of died: emails and listening and listening. Maybe <laughs> I don't know. Um, reviews. We just don't care about that. No, no. The reviews have not died. Really? I'll tell I don't know if like the Wash guys put out like a hey, give them uh reviews on I I looked like 2 days ago. We have a lot of new reviews. Really? Yeah. So I was going to ask you what the benefit of getting reviews is and I do have an idea for just like a fun little game that maybe it doesn't even benefit us reviews wise, but I was thinking of like fun ways to get back into the reviews game but explain to me what's i think like the more reviews you get like the more uh visible the podcast becomes on apple music and stuff or uh apple Podcasts or whatever okay so i think that's i i don't really know but that's what i remember seeing back in the day when we used to care about that okay but i mean i'm down to care about it again if you want to leave us a review for go for it i did see a lot of reviews um or a, a few reviews were like depressing but whatever in five stars so very cool love that (laughs) very cool so here's my idea for a review type game and patreon people maybe once a month or something you can pick what the topic can be but all right so let's say the next month or so leave us five star reviews the theme of which is annoyance that we talk about jack black too much so when someone goes gotta through, be five stars though yeah right five star review you'd be like great podcast hey, th- th- you can really sense their friendship this is a real this th- they've got great energy never a dull moment do i need that much jack black talk no but whatever yeah. the rest of it is great and then love like, the pod guys please wouldn't hate if you scaled back on the jack black love yeah take a week off from jack black maybe act like uh maybe act like we were so into Jack Black and it got out of control. Like Pete thought he was Jack Black, <laughs> and DJ started uh, dressing like Jack. DJ started uh, making himself. Look I was a like bit concerned Jack when Black. when DJ gained two hundred pounds to, to cosplay as Jack Black yeah. for an episode. Uh, but other than that, glad everything's going well. Or did somebody leave a review being like, "As the world, as the world's." Uh, what is a preeminent Jack yeah. Black fan? 
this is the only podcast that I listen to, and it's everything that I could ever want. All caps, Pete, period, your period, not period, <laughs> Jack, period, black, period, five stars. <laughs> Isn't that a good idea? I love that idea. So maybe once a month, and let's let's make Jack Black the first one, but maybe, uh, again, we have a good line of communication on the Patreon, but maybe once a month we can take suggestions as to what the complaint or topic of the reviews should be, just on the off chance that someone's like, hmm, this podcast's been recommended to me. I better go to Apple Music and read the <laughs> reviews and see what they think. And then it's just a lot of, like pretty annoyed just really gearing up for some jack black (laughs) (laughs) that'd be that'd be like the uh senior prank thing uh that my my grade didn't do a senior prank but i know a classic one would be like you take four chickens yeah and release them in the hallways and and you you number them them like one one two four and five yeah and everyone's looking for that third chicken. <laughs> Everyone, people would just be pouring through the podcast looking for Jack Black talk. I did see that Jack Black went uh, viral. I recently. feel like that's all Jack Black does now. Really? Like Jack Black is a uh, quite an interesting character to me. Um, well, I mean, he's always an interesting character, but like his, what he does now, he just makes like fun videos for YouTube. I think. Okay. And that's that's it. He just does like weird shit. So the reason. I saw him trending the other day was, it was like Jack Black, uh, Twitter users are discussing like what a positive presence Jack Black is after a video from the movie School of Rock resurfaced. And it was a video of him telling one of the students, because uh, the, one of the students is very self-conscious about her weight. And he's like, you are the best singer here. That's something that everyone in this class would like to have. And you don't look the way you look for any negative reason. Like, like it was in that time there where I think fat shaming was pretty ubiquitous. It was just like a very kind of surface level like, hey, don't feel bad about your weight or don't dwell on it or whatever. It was like a lightly positive message. And people were sharing that video like, Jack Black is a real one. Jack Black is this and everything. And I was like, you know, that was his line. Right. Yeah. I don't, I don't necessarily know if he wrote the script. Right. Well, he could have. But it's a like, positive yeah. scene. He was like, hey. Although I, uh, Jack Black rules. Like, he is very yeah. wholesome. Like, seems like everybody a great guy. wants to root for him, I think. Seems like a great guy. And he was the romantic lead in one movie. I forget what it was. It was, I think it was a Christmas movie. Is it the holiday? That's not the. Oh yeah, yeah. Is that the holiday yeah, with uh, like Cameron Diaz and Jude Law? And uh, he, he, and I know that he and Kate Winslet. They, they are... do like the old swap. Yeah, they, they so swap that, locations. Is that the yeah, it's like Cameron Diaz and Kate Winslet. They swap houses for like the holiday. So they make him a huge cutie pie. And honestly, again, back then, the industry I don't think was very open minded with things like body shape and size and everything. And he looked great in that movie. And I, was, I don't know. It's, it's always like just depressing. A guy. It's always depressing when you see something from like 30 years ago that is lightly normal. And you're like, oh, thank God. <laughs> they were people who they made were movies so were progressive. kind of normal for one second in a movie. Thank God. It wasn't all chaos. They didn't treat him like shit because he was a little overweight. Right. <laughs> the, the, wow. Like, so progressive. Guy, so <laughs> So nice people are interested in him. Not a single person called him disgusting in that whole movie. Unbelievable uh, masterpiece. I know, man. Ahead of its time. Yeah, Jack, I mean, I was a big Jack Black fan just because, uh, were, were you into the D? No. Maybe that could be a future, what's mine is yours. I, I they're, very, they're, they're very raunchy. So even like young DJ, I'd be like, okay. Do you need to have a, a, a track called cock push-ups? <laughs> Let's skip this one. Get to the singing. How do you uh how do you think Shallow Hal would be received if it were oh, made today? <laughs> I mean again, that's an that's another thing where I think that people will say this celebrity twenty years ago played this character or did this thing or whatever, and they use it as this person is a bad person. I think that 
that glosses over a bigger issue, which is like they made an entire movie called Shallow Hell that was oh my god like the 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 message some of the messages in that movie and even how like they reward his character and paint him in such a good light that like see he likes this person for who they are it's like that's always what it's supposed to be right it's always what it's supposed to be he doesn't get a fucking medal for that right. that's why I, i've always been against the um and i'm not patting myself on the back but like i've always been against the can you believe this person's with that person oh, yeah, can you yeah. believe that person's like at the end of the day People are trying to find people they can stomach. Right. <laughs> like people are trying to find companions, that people with whom they get along. It's not it really and TVs and everything kind of made us think that is kids that like, oh, they've got to be got to both be hot. hot yeah. This, you're right. And no, it's I mean it's like even the hottest person in the world can just be someone that you do not want around after like two weeks if they suck and even that i mean like each person's definition of hot yeah. obviously obviously changes from from person to person so i guess jack black has been in it's been on both, both sides yeah, he's been <laughs> on both sides of that so maybe we'll have him go viral for like an honest discussion about, I'd like to have Jack Black what on the Jack podcast. Black's I feel like he would be a great say guest about the movie industry in the early two thousands. Jack Black, I bet, would be a great dude to have on the podcast. Jack, I mean, Black, I think do you Jack like Kyle Black Gass? is that the other guy in Tenacious D? Yeah, no, I don't know him. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't like him. No, not for me. <laughs> uh, we have a read, by the way. Yeah. Okay. Look. I'm prepared for this read. I'm going to try to not even look too much at the notes because I want it to come from the heart. I'm not I'm not the smartest person, not the most eloquent person, but I am a stickler with the English language. I mean that about myself, but I also admittedly will say I can be a little judgmental if I see someone writing something that's not as well written as it could be or too many words in the sentence, et cetera, et cetera. Something needs an editor, whatever it may be. You can tell grammar is important to you. Gr- yeah. I, I think that it's very, very useful. But that doesn't mean I have all the answers. So that's where Grammarly comes in. I love Grammarly. We've been using it. We've been using Grammarly Premium. One of my big shortcomings as a, a man is when I'm writing, sometimes I'll have too many words in a sentence when I type it. Grammarly will take that last sentence I just said and probably say, hey, you could make that I use too many words. You could tighten it up. You can make it concise. Grammarly is going to give you clarity suggestions, vocab suggestions. And again, what I, what I love is it'll help you make those sentences concise. There's nothing like reading a 16-word sentence that you're like, oh man, that's a kind of long sentence. But that could have been 26, 27, 20. That could have been a real nightmare. That's where Grammarly comes in. Grammarly Premium doesn't just correct your mistakes. It makes you a better writer, which I think is a really useful tool. No matter what you need writing for, I think a lot of people in their jobs, whatever it may be. And I, even as like a person who writes every single totally. day, it is literally my job. Yes. There are days where I'm just like, I don't know how to write. I've oh forgotten my. how to write. Like I can't imagine if somebody works in like a uh, like a cube or like they're doing they're like a numbers person. If they were to ever have to like write a letter or anything that was substantial after not writing for like the past however many years, yeah, that's got to be a fucking nightmare. I uh, yeah yeah. I mean, th- think think of we've all probably written academically at some point meaning you have to write a paper you have to write whatever it's so easy for things we learned to drop off and i mean even growing up taking english classes and everything i was i'll I'll put it this way i i don't really read sheet music when it comes to writing i'm more play by ear like i just know that if, yeah, I, if I see something that's wrong, I'll say, oh, well, the, the, you shouldn't have hyphenated that. Yeah. Hey, that, that ends in L-Y. It's compound modifier. Get there that are out too there. many rules, man. Like, right. I, I, I don't know the rule book. I just you know. feel. Yeah, right. Like, my, I, I watch the game. I, I rely on the eye test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that we're both like that. Play more by ear than, I don't, I don't think we've ever. I think that you have a better understanding of the rule book than I do. 
maybe I, I'm pretty good. You about definitely AP do. Style. Yeah, I'm pretty you definitely good about do. Oh, AP style. <laughs> That's what Cy would say. Uh, so another cool thing about Grammarly, and I just want I could just list these things off, but think of Grammarly as like this one big thing that touches whatever you're doing. So you you can have it integrated on your if you have Grammarly Premium, you got it on your desktop, you got it on your browsers, you got it mobile apps, whatever. Twitter, it, it can be helpful there. It'll probably tell you, hey, do you want to end this with a period? But you don't want to do that on Twitter. That makes you look weird. Do you use Grammarly on this read? Because it could be a lot shorter. We got eight more minutes. Of this. <laughs> we're talking, you know, if this were Grammarly, then be short. We're doing Grammarly Premium. We're okay. giving you all the bonus features. Okay. okay? What else do I have? Do more than just spell check. Say what you really mean with Grammarly Premium. Get 20% off Grammarly Premium by signing up at Grammarly.com slash brunch. That's 20% off at Grammarly.com slash brunch. Uh, Jack Black is in the <laughs> news. <laughs> he is. Is he? What do yeah, you do? Yeah, he's trending on Twitter because he was in... Um, because he was in... School Jumanji. Rock. Oh, yeah, that's right. Did you like School of Rock? Yes, yeah, School of Rock rules. If somebody, some would even say that it rocks. Ooh, that's a uh, yeah. It's one of those like it's one of those feel good kidnapping movies. That's true, There's, right? It, Doesn't this he light kidnapping? He kidnaps them. You know what? All time scene. And he definitely he cons his way into a uh, into yeah. working with children, which is a bit problematic. That's true. All time scene. Maybe the best scene in School of Rock. Jack Black, Joanne Cusack. He pops... Uh, Joanne Cusack? Isn't it Joan Cusack? Joan... Why did I say Joanne Cusack? <laughs> yeah, that's Grammarly weird. Premium is going <laughs> to... Grammarly Premium will take care of that. Shout out Grammarly Premium. Episode brought to you by that. Joan Cusack. Why the fuck did I say Joanne Cusack? He pops... Uh, uh, he finds an old jukebox full of 45s. Pops a nickel in. What song does he play? Old 45s. No, that'd be tight, though. Um, Would have been a bit too on the nose. Yeah, uh, he plays. Oh, we got to put old forty fives on the podcast on the. Uh, as, oh, as true. On brunch. That song is tremendous. Was, I love that song. Yeah, that was. I think. I think that was your. Um, that was my introduction. Yeah. to Chromio. Yep. I have such a weird relationship with Chromio because I like them a lot, but they're not. They're not good. They're right. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're, like they're, they're they not are great. just they hit a lot of my personal boxes. Yeah. But I I know that they're not good. Yeah. Like I think similar I so I can't, I can't say that. Like they're good. Yeah. For for them to be like popular and for a lot of people to like them, they got to be good. And like they put out good music, some good music. But it is just like I recognize that they're not reinventing the wheel or anything yeah i think in legitimately 10 minutes you and i could make a chromeo song probably just like fire up an arpeggiator just like a just got a little lindrum throw in something about like calling a girl girl and that's it and that's so much fun that's really really fun music but when people are like oh isn't chromeo fucking sick like no like i don't have like any chromeo merch no definitely not yeah but 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 we've also never been in a music video with Haim, so they're doing that something is right. Such a cool music video, and again, I I, re- I, I do very much enjoy Chromeo. And Dave One, I think, is such a handsome man that we don't we've not really talked about his looks. But Dave Maklovich, he's known as Dave One. He's uh he's fantastic. But uh, the song that Jack Black plays for Joanna Cusack, is <laughs> shut up. Edge of Seventeen. Uh, Stevie Nicks. Mm. Oh yeah, okay, okay. And he's singing it, and she's singing it. He gets her, uh, this is yeah. He gets her drunk because she's like very. He's a pretty unsavory character. <laughs> pretty despicable <laughs> yeah. character. I should quote tweet that video of like. Reminder: Jack Black yeah, is a great just person. Bring up just all the like, skeletons. Was this before or after his character got uh, couldn't love a fat woman and and got the principal drunk and yeah. kidnapped children? Yeah, 
Not the best character. Do you remember his name in that movie? Schneebly? Yeah, Ned, Mr. Sh- Ned Schneebly. Ned Schneebly? <laughs> yeah. That's a really cool... It's a very cool name. That's a really cool name. So we got Jack Black. Uh, we got... I could explain Dogecoin to you, but... Nah. Is that a win? Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I think the, the Dogecoin... You, Dogecoin I'm cool with being in the be, wings. Yeah, Dogecoin should be a more... A less uh, defiant Queen's, Queen's Gambit. Gambit for you. Just be like, hey, you see what's happening with Dogecoin? Yeah, the, thing nope. about, the thing about Dogecoin, though, is that like Dogecoin can make me money. The Queen's Gambit is not going to do anything for me. The question is, uh, can it make you money now? Probably not. Late? That's the that's the, yeah. the fear. People ten, people five years ago were like, man, I wish I'd been on, on Bitcoin. And that was when it was, I don't know, maybe 5000 10 thousand dollars or something like that now it's at sixty thousand dollars right crazy uh but bitcoin actually like does something yeah i don't think that dogecoin does anything it does nothing <laughs> you've ever thought about that like there's no way of knowing there why did i say it that way there's no way of knowing 10 years ago or whenever bitcoin was first starting up like if one of your friends was like hey do you know what cryptocurrencies are? <laughs> right. You buy them in their coins and they're worth fractions of a cent, but maybe one day they'll be worth a hundred dollars. I would be like, shut the fuck up. That's what sucks. Like even, like, even if I could go back in time and have somebody tell me invest in Bitcoin or buy Bitcoin. I don't even know what the words are for that. There's no way I would do it. Right. You just don't have like the foresight of thinking that that's a good idea. Like who, especially when you don't have money, like, right? Like, well, yeah. You, you're, you're like, you want me sh- to take my my actual money and put it into a thing that I like can't see, can't use, right? And like that's I don't have money. You want me to take my money that I, I the little money that I do have, and then just like throw it into the abyss? Yeah. No, thank you. The wild thing is there are stories about people who really got excited about cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin and shit that uh, bought like, hey. I, I I'm gonna buy a bunch of Bitcoin. Look, you can spend it just like any other type of money. Oh yeah, and, and he spent, bought like a pizza. Yeah, like, right. There was a guy that was so proud to like purchase a pizza with Bitcoin. So like it cost him like ninety thousand Bitcoin, <laughs> yeah, and to be twenty bucks or whatever. And now ninety thousand Bitcoin is like, like ten dollars. <laughs> yeah, big, a lot of money. It's, he's gonna live on that for the rest of his life. Yeah. the The one thing I'll say on Dogecoin, and I have very, very little of it. I just I, I bought like thirty bucks worth when it was nothing. Before I even knew it was a joke, I was like, I just saw it on a list of people. I think Nate from Barstool. People were tweeting about like buy this one, buy this one, buy this one. So I I had Robinhood because we uh, had the sponsorship back in the day. And I was like, all right, I'm going to buy this Dogecoin thing. And then after I bought it, I looked it up. And I was like, oh, what? I saw the logo and everything. I was like, oh, this is the first thing I'm... Oh, this is the, oh, the worst. And then by the end of the day, it was starting to go up. And uh, yeah, it's a very... I'm happy for it's you. It's like a stupid sports team to root for. That does nothing. It really does nothing. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's not going to make the playoffs, but it's a funny uh, sports team. It's a Super team. League. Yeah. Dogecoin is the uh, the Super League. Yeah. of uh of stocks here's the the one thing i'll say about it though that trump got elected so like the whole thing i'm not telling anybody to go get dogecoin again i think that, that where it is right now i'd say like it might be past hey good time to Entry jump point, in yeah uh, I, yeah i think it's like it's fun to follow if you got it for a few cents but I don't know. I, like, I'd be very afraid to take it seriously, mm-hmm. especially considering it doesn't exist. But Trump got elected. There was so much. Well, there's no way Trump's going to get elected. He's not going to win the primary. He's not going to win this. He's not going to win that. And just like every step of the way, the world got stupider and stupider and stupider. So obviously Trump getting elected was a very negative example of we live in a really stupid time and weird, dumb, stupid things can happen. I think a potential maybe positive, I don't know if, if it would have negative effects on the world or whatever, would be... Like a bunch of people getting rich off Dogecoin. Th- right. <laughs> like people who don't know anything about investing getting rich off of 
This I don't know. I, I feel like there's a there's a little bit of um, I, I I I guess like people people getting rich that like didn't necessarily yeah like the wrong like, people getting rich people yeah people getting a ton of money that like didn't didn't deserve it I guess like to get rich or didn't really earn it but then again like most rich people are bad anyway I was going to say <laughs> like when you think about the wrong people getting rich. I thought of like, oh, some ninth grader who just mowed the lawn and then bought, like, I don't know, fifty dollars worth of Dogecoin at one cent, and then it ended, or at fractions of a cent, and then he ends up with like a hundred thousand dollars. That I'm like, that's not necessarily like the wrong person getting rich. I'm like, hey, like that kid can just pay for his, his college into, now yeah. or something. Yeah, like that. I, yeah. I mean, I guess like when you do consider the people that did quote unquote earn getting rich a yeah. lot of the time they they did that by like doing some shady shit dogecoin is would be a hilarious way to be a new money person though <laughs> that's legitimately like russ hanneman shit yep like, just like you were rolling up in like you were a nice stupid. ass car <laughs> with the fucking doge logo on the side door yeah today as we're recording this april 20th was supposed to be doge day and everybody was warning, like, oh, 420 is going to be Doge Day. And people were saying, like, it's going to hit 69 cents or it's going to hit a dollar or whatever. So stupid. It's so silly. But, again, it's like a dumb little sports team I'm kind of rooting for. Uh, you're watching Yellowstone? I am. I've been cruising. So, like, when we're talking about baseball, like, it's a, it's a thing that, like, I don't necessarily have to care about. It falls perfectly in the, like... Hey, this is good enough for me to enjoy and watch it, and I'm having a good time. Uh, it's like a little bit of background noise, and then like there's the other side of it where like it's not gonna hurt me. The show can't hurt me because like if it ends or if it's disappointing or if it gets bad, then I'm just like whatever. Yeah. See you later. Yeah. It's it's like it's it's awesome. It's like a, it sounds like a less frustrating Walking Dead. Yeah. Yeah. Like it because. There are similar elements to The Walking Dead where, like, they kind of just keep, like, writing themselves in circles. Okay. Like, there's been three seasons. I'm on, like, halfway through season three right now. And it's just, like, so I don't know how much you know about Yellowstone, but it's about... Not even a damn thing. So it's uh, the the Dutton family in Montana. They own the biggest ranch in the United States. They own a ton of land in Montana. Cinematography is great because, like, they've got, like, just Just a bunch of land. Just a bunch of land in, in, in Montana. And they've got... An incredible like uh, house, okay, that's built on the land. So, uh, very very pleasing aesthetically. Um, but it's th- like basically the premise of every season is that somebody came in from outside of Montana and is trying to take the land or trying to do some shit to like they're trying to build a, a country club, trying to build a ski resort, and like it's just riding themselves in circles where like the Duttons are are trying to make sure it doesn't happen. And uh, and so like that's just basically the cyclical nature of Yellowstone. So it's like Entourage. Yeah, it's like v- Vin's making the movie. Oh shit! Wait, uh, somebody's trying to prevent Vin from making the movie. We should start comparing every show to Entourage. <laughs> that's right. It's like ah, oh, that sounds a little. So is a is a male lead? Does he have a best friend? Let me guess. He's got a loud agent. Sounds like as a ripoff of Entourage. <laughs> yeah, total ripoff of Entourage. Oh, I've been getting uh, smoke more weed turtle thrown at me a lot the last couple of days because my oh, tweets yeah. have just become... You've uh, gotten into stoner tweets. Yeah, like without necessarily getting into stoner culture. I, I, I don't you know, had I'm, to... I'm a fan of Grateful Dead fans, so... You, have, uh, you, ha- you constantly have stupid tweets. Yeah. But over the past couple of days, there have been like just a- like M A E K E S. You think tweet like makes you think? Yes, yeah. You said that Pringles were like Lay's, but if they were taco shells, baked Lay's. They're like it's the same thing as baked Lay's, except as uh, taco shells. Kind of, <laughs> they're just curved up a little bit. Do you think kids these days know which came first, the Pringle or the baked Lay? The Pringle came first, right? We all know that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I hope that everybody always knows that. Pringles are bad, right? I so I I got my first Door Dash thing recently, and I used to love Pringles, but like I'm pretty sure that they're bad. They, yeah, that they're they're just baked lays. They're just like except it doesn't say on their packaging these are better for you. 
I'm like, so these are just bad chips. <laughs> yeah, that's they're, all they are. They're like horrible. Like they're they're like I feel like they're the most processed chips in and, the world. And the dust on them is not distributed well at all. The picture no. that I tweeted after I sent it, I was like, oh my, that that was a barbecue one, and it was it had like a little, maybe like a little kiss of paprika on the corner or something, but that was. I'm um I don't I don't I don't never really like gotten too deep into the Pringles uh Pringles catalog <laughs> yeah yeah right the uh, discography of Pringles uh m- mainly just like an original and then maybe light pizza yeah the flavored. pizza one is popular this is a, a food issue is Pringles the ones that d- do the stacks yeah okay because that's like become popular where like you stack the flavors and you get like a custom Pringle I'll tell you what again like th- it's just baked lays they're like. I would say worse baked lays. Baked lays are good. Baked like lays those. don't have like the dust and they don't have like the residue yeah. that Pringles does. I like baked lays. Baked lays with like a turkey sandwich is a very nice, fine, boring lunch. You know what the best chip in the world is? <sighs> Who? A Pentium 6. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Uh, no, um, Deep River rosemary oh and olive oil yes yes the best chip in the world rosemary and olive oil yes and jalapeno are like my two favorite chip flavors it sounds love, so weird i don't love jalapeno just because it's like overwhelming yeah yeah but the rosemary and olive oil dude is just incredible and like those deep river chips i feel like you don't see them too often but like big spot to get them is tj maxx really yeah interesting yeah have you had the jason tatum chips no what's that he has i think they're ruffles they're flaming hot st louis barbecue chips that sounds pretty good they taste very good but they are so overwhelming in every way they're, the taste is very very strong it's good these chips are a shade of red that you've never seen in your life and i i was like i, I can't eat them out of the bag because my hands get all red from reaching. Oh, like, it's, so they're like flaming hot Cheetos. I so I've actually never had flaming hot Cheetos. Pretty good, but they, like they, are, you know that you are putting poison in your body. Yeah, I've so if I get a bag of chips, it lasts a day and a half max. I've had one bag of these Jason Tatum chips for like two weeks because you can only do like I three can, at a time. <laughs> I tried to have a beer with them, and you can't you can't do anything with them. Because it, 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 you can't everything's taste the beer. red, you can't yeah. taste anything else. It's a mess. The bowl that I put it in is white. I have to like <laughs> not anymore. The bowl pal. Away. It is incredibly overwhelming. Uh, this is a food dilemma I had. The, the, I'm getting a little peek behind the curtain with all those Pringles, Jason Tatum chips, and what I'm about to say. Talk. Haven't been eating the healthiest lately. Whatever. I'll get it back. Uh, how come at the drive-through, it doesn't? You don't get the menu. Until you're ordering, is that yeah. intentional? No, like before, like back in the day, they used to have like the pre-menu, yes, the pre-speaker menu. Now which they is use like, the pre-speaker thing as like ads. They yeah, put, they put like it's fucking bullshit because that's so much pressure when you get to the fucking thing. Thank you. I was thinking this could be like a Patreon episode or something, but I was like, yeah, I don't want to. I, I want the people to know this. Okay. Yeah, that's a fucked up pressure. There, are you a big like? Uh, I need to look at the menu before I go to a restaurant. Person, yeah, you you do do that. I unless never I know, do that. unless I know that like, hey, we're getting sandwiches. Okay, I'll get a chicken parm, something like okay. that. But if if uh, yeah, I if I'm never, going to a restaurant, I'll stake it out before. I never uh, pregame the the menu rest the the restaurant menu. Hmm. Never do that. Ellen does it everywhere. I think I think if you can, I think it's. I would recommend doing it. I don't like. I don't like that. I I like the experience of getting to the restaurant and then like seeing what what they're about. That's a good point because it's not like you're gonna say, "Hey guys, I looked at the menu. I don't love it, so we're yeah, gonna have to go right. somewhere yeah. else." Yeah, like I like it as part of the experience. Yeah, um, I like that. But I I do need to know, like, if I'm in my car in a drive through and there's like people behind me and I know that there's pressure and I know that this person's working the drive through they don't want to sit there and wait for me to decide let me see the pre menu yeah it's brutal that is i would say probably the number one what i would probably incorrectly call a retail pressure where you get there and as you are looking at the menu you are expected to say what you want yeah also on there uh at a concert 
can after you've gotten in and you're going to your seats and they say, can I see your ticket? If you have anything in your hands and or your ticket is in a pocket, that is going to be so a thousand pressure. times harder yeah. than it was normally going to be. And you're like, what do I have in my pocket? Do I have the... Oh, do I... Uh, I had a stomach ache today, so I have like pills for my stomach in my pocket. <laughs> if I t- am I gonna reach in and like pull out a bunch of like pills. I have stomach <laughs> issues pills? What's going on? Am I gonna make an ass of myself? I I hate that. And then, uh, how's it coming in there? Oh, bathroom? No, <laughs> no, but that's <laughs> that. That's also tough. I was I was saying. Um, like a uh, changing room oh. or trying on clothes. I mean, honestly, I'd well, rather who... get that in the bathroom than when you're, if you're trying on clothes, you never get like someone who works. No. Out, like, hey, the, the person who showed you to the room, you never get that. No. What the fuck? Leave me alone. Yeah. Who you, cares? So you, when you go to try on clothes, they'll say, Oh, just these two items. Okay. We're going to take you, we're going to put you in this room. And it's very nice of them. They, Sometimes open the door for you. I mean, I know how it works, but I've never been like pressured by a yeah, dressing room attendant. Yeah, as you're trying on clothes, they'll say like, how's it coming in there? You need anything? Because they they, they want to know if you want it in a different size. They can oh, do anything okay. for you. But it always sucks because they're like, how's it coming in there? And I'm like, I, I, I imagined for some reason that my body would change from when <laughs> I got in my car to drive to the store to when I put on the clothes. So feeling pretty bad. I'm going to end up buying something that's too small, hoping that I'll fit into it. And uh, I'm never going to, and I'm going to have so much clothes, and I'm never going to throw them away because I'm going to be like, I haven't even worn that yet. Why would I throw it away? So, no. I'm good. Thank <laughs> you. They're like, I just said, how's it coming in there? And you're like, they left no, five minutes ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They quit their job. No, uh, the uh, the bathroom is is what I was thinking of. How's it going in there? You feeling all right, I'm pal? in the bathroom. <laughs> That's what I would I would say. I'm still in the bathroom. I had a, I had like a, a got in my own head sort of situation last week, a couple weeks ago after I got my uh, after I got my my J and J shot. Oh yeah, I um I decided to to continue the trend of putting awesome things in my body by going straight to the McDonald's drive through, and I got my order. Then they uh, they did the old I don't know if they have you been to the drive through where they like stick out the thing on the stick to put your card in. So oh they yeah, they don't have to touch it. They yeah. got like the little stick. So you can put your credit card in there. I got my the the shot in my left arm, and so I had to reach out the window with my card, and it literally felt like my arm weighed Ooh. ten thousand pounds. And the the thing is out there floating, and I have to slide the card into the little slot. It took me probably about like three minutes. And the the guy in the behind the window was like, "Are you fucking serious, dude?" Tough. You know what I did at the drive through? What? You're not gonna like this. You. We're not a very pro Burger King podcast. Nope. Because you hate Burger King I hate more Burger than King anything. So much. I think that Burger King is like a necessary evil. I'm not a big fan of it, but I'm always near them for whatever reason. And I eat too much food, so inevitably I'll end up getting Burger King sometimes. But like I'll even think about it when I get Burger King. I'm like Pete he would be so, so mad at me right now. Be like just drive ten miles to a McDonald's or something. I don't go to McDonald's nearly, mainly for proximity reasons, nearly as much as I go to Burger King. But Burger King has new chicken sandwiches they're talking about and they're all excited about. And they've got they're trying to get in on like the Popeye's Chick fil A type game. So too late, man. It's like Dogecoin. Yeah. You've already lost, pal. Yeah, you can't yeah, you can't start making chicken sandwiches once it's past thirty five cents. What are you crazy? I got it. It was okay. They make the same sandwich. The options you have are you could get it in spicy or regular, and you can get it with pickles or with lettuce and tomato. That's a weird option. Yeah, what? Super weird option. Give me pickles, lettuce, and tomato. Right. I ended up getting the one with lettuce and tomato. Stupid. Just because I, but it was because I was ordering, and they, I, I just saw the sandwich. If you so don't I have said, chicken sandwich, you got to get pickles on it no matter what. I said, oh, okay, that I'll do the, let's say it's a number 10 or whatever, and... Uh, that was, and then after I ordered, I was like, "Oh, the nine right above it has pickles. I should have gotten that one instead." But is it a long? Is it the long chicken sandwich? No, or shout out that sandwich. Though. Yeah, that one's That's pretty a good. good That's I, even as a Burger King hater, I I, I respect that one. Yeah, but, and the rodeo burger. See, I was never super big on the rodeo burger, rodeo and I love good. me a actually. I don't know if I can say this because I haven't done it in forever, but I used to be a huge fan of 
any sort of barbecue burger type situations. The only uh, the only menu items at Burger King I can respect are the long chicken sandwich, the rodeo burger, um, the the uh, the chicken fries. Chicken Chick- fries are dope. Ch- chicken fries are pretty good. I and got then- chicken fries the day I got rollerblades. <laughs> Hell yeah! Big day for like twelve year old DJ. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the uh, the the Hershey pro- the Hershey pie. Yes, that was so good. Yeah, that was. I don't know if they do. They still have that. I hope so, man. I would, I would go to Burger King just for the Hershey pie. That was a good time. And so was this. It's brunch. You can get new episodes every um, Friday. <laughs>